Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered, the podcast that reveals the mysterious world behind the thick, opaque curtain of the adult industry. Today, my guest is originally from Venezuela, but her successful adult career has taken her all over the world, shooting for top brands like Vixen, Brazzers, Dorsal, and Sex Like Real. Welcome, Agatha Vega. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me here. <laughs> of course. How are you? I'm great. And you? <laughs> I'm good. I have to say, so I got your email and I saw that you were on Inside Only Fans and I uh, hit up CJ because we're friends and I was like, is she cool? And she was like, yeah, she's so much fun. And I think she I'm said you had great tits too or something like that. So like, <laughs> yeah, I show my tits. Sold. <laughs> Sold. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad too. I wanted to be in different podcasts because I'm not really well known in here, but mm -hmm. I want to be. So yeah, it's good that you had time for me. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. And thank you for like, I changed the schedule so many times this week. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, so I appreciate your flexibility. So um, let's start from the beginning, right? So tell me, you grew up in Venezuela. Tell me a little bit about that. I always liked to live there. I mean, I didn't even want to leave Venezuela, you know, and, and I never thought I would become like a porn star. But I guess when I, I think uh, what I was doing in Venezuela, I, then I think now like, okay, this was coming. And so I grew uh, studying in a nun's uh, school. And Okay. And... Uh, it's very pretty conservative now, of course, and uh, I always had a uh, kind of problems uh, studying there. I mean, I I, I feel like I didn't like um, the school mm -hmm. uh, years. Uh, I wanted to finish really bad, but now that I remember, I had a great time. Like I, I had a, I studied with the same people since I was like two years old. Uh, still, I, gra I graduate, so they they saw also how. Like we all see each other, know how we change, mm -hmm. how we grew up, and I had pretty good memories. Like I had a lot of fun, and then uh, to see the change, I I never keep like in contact with many people from the school, but I guess they they see like what I become now, and they must be like, wow, this this is crazy, but. I feel, yeah, it was coming because uh, on the school, uh, I always like to do photography in Venezuela. So I did a few uh, uh, courses, mm -hmm. no? like uh, I had some some classes uh, and I started to do photography on myself. Like I like to be the model. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how it started uh, in Venezuela. I mean, this is not like legal, no, like they don't do, you're going to do porn or, mm -hmm. or this kind of things. So you don't cannot even do like naked things on the street nothing it's not like europe like in spain yeah and wait can you shoot nudity in venezuela or just not nudity in public mm, uh, in public yeah i guess uh, if yeah. you are in your house it's okay like if no yeah. one knows you're doing it i mean <laughs> technically you can't shoot nudity in public here either but i know europe is a lot less europe is different strict, yeah. yeah i mean also, yeah, like you shouldn't be doing things in front of people, uh, not bother other people, but you can be topless and different mm -hmm. things. Not like here also. Yeah, I see yeah. some places you cannot. So, yeah, in Venezuela it's the same, like, uh, but and anyway, I, I started to do my my own photography. I was the model, so I started to do like nudes. Uh, I don't know. I, I like how I look uh, naked, I guess. <laughs> and. Uh, and then I started to shoot with the photographers. Um, I had a different kind of experience now, like some photographers. Then I learned like uh, it's better to have someone who you trust uh, anyway, different stuff. So did you I, have some bad experiences? Yeah, photographers uh, like some many people say like they many photographers are just perverts that want to take it like pics and they are photographers. But yeah, <laughs> we call them we call them GWCs or guys with cameras. Ah, exactly. And they're basically like, what's the easiest way for me to get a naked chick in front of me? Call myself a photographer. Yeah, exactly. And I was so, yeah, I didn't have experience. So I got in many photographers, like, yeah, yeah. stupid experience. And uh, then I remember um, uh, this production, um, Watch for Beauty, is the first one I started to Okay, I know who they are. With. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, Yeah, Mark. Watch for Beauty. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, I think I've actually licensed some sets from them for my website. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they do this glam nudity, you know, like boudoir, I don't know. And uh, Well, they do also masturbation. So, <laughs> I start to work with them because they had a photographer in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. 
and I think there's not too many options. So, I mean, I say yes, uh, like, of course, I was interested. And I started to do masturbation solos. I was also, like, selling my content. Uh, when I, like, graduate, I start to sell my content in other platforms. Uh, at that time, OnlyFans didn't exist. And I was doing good money. But then the situation in Venezuela, I think many people know that it's not the best uh, situation and er every year got worse and I didn't want to leave but at some point it was like okay uh, it's really uh, annoying like it's hard to live in here so uh, good that I have my sister living in Tenerife and my mom too they everybody moved I, I was the only one I didn't want to leave Venezuela but <laughs> at the end I did what were some of the like direct consequences of the political strife that like you felt like what were some like things that affected your life directly uh, oh, many things. I mean, there, there was uh, really hard years like uh, 2016, 2017, where Venezuela was uh, got really bad. Like there was not uh, many things like you couldn't find things uh, about food, medicine, uh, nothing. Uh, there's still more or less uh, like the same problems about, about the water, the light, like the internet is so horrible so i was working on with the internet selling things <laughs> and uh and yeah that everything was affecting me like i could i couldn't even try to do money because uh, the basic things were fucked up so and then the money doesn't uh, you cannot do too much like uh you cannot save money you cannot uh, do like big plans uh, so Everything, like everything so <laughs> hard in Venezuela. And mm -hmm. now it's got a bit better in some stuff. Like at least you can find everything now. Like mm -hmm. you don't have this situation. But anyway, the money is not good. The internet is still horrible. And, uh, and the way you feel now, like you don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Like in many La Latin uh, American countries, like uh, you don't feel safe. It's not... Uh, it's an insecure place to yeah, live in. Yeah. So yeah, and also I remember I was uh, I wanted to start a new life. I wanted like okay, I want to go new place where no one knows me, and just start over again. And that's what I did. So I'm happy I I got out. Like I didn't want to, but it was the the best decision. Yeah. yeah. So then where'd you go from Venezuela? I went to Tenerife, Spain. Okay. Yeah, that's where I'm living since I moved from Venezuela. Okay, and then what's what's that place like? Uh, it's an island, you know, Canary Islands is mm -hmm. close to Africa. It's, uh, it's beautiful, uh, just beach. I mean, there's not too much <laughs> mm -hmm. to do if you are not like... A, and when you come to this kind of big cities, you know, like uh, LA or, well, Madrid, or like you realize, yeah, like it can be a really small place, but... I like it. I like the 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 lifestyle in there, like island. That's island right. life, it's like slower, <laughs> right. and it must be a kind of a big culture shock <laughs> for you to go from there to like L.A. or any of the other big cities, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I like the yeah the contrast. Like uh, here, I'm doing many things. I'm trying to take advantage before I go I go back because yeah I know there I don't have that many options and mm -hmm. stuff so. I like the contrast, but I want to be, yeah, I also, I want to be back. <laughs> I want my island. <laughs> Do you think that that's somewhere that you want to stay? In like Tenerife? Like permanently? Yeah. Or here? No, in Tel Aviv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm going to live there. I mean, uh, I'm going to be traveling a lot because, again, like, there's many things you can you cannot find in Tenerife yet because it's really small. But, yeah, for sure, I think I'm, I'm going to live there. It's so pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. beautiful. I was actually exploring shooting in the Canary Islands a while ago. Um, You've been there? I have not been there, but I was like, so I've shot in Prague, I've shot in Budapest. All right. Um, and so I thought like, you know, we I was I was exploring options for doing like a kind of tropical island like beach shoot. But you've been in Spain, no? I have not been to Spain. Oh, okay. I know. Yeah. It's actually like the one country I haven't been to that I'd really like to go to. It's nice. It's yeah. on my it's on my bucket list. I will get there eventually. Nice. I have a three year old, so I'm not traveling anytime soon. But once <laughs> she gets older, hopefully. Ah, uh, yeah, you had to um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I've heard it's amazing out there. So you were doing solo work for a long time. Um, but then you did do a jump into boy girl, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us like how that came about and what was that experience like? 
And so when I moved to Tenerife, it started uh, like a, a few months after the pandemic, now the COVID and everything. And we were locking the houses. I was doing you know, OnlyFans. No, that's more or less when I started with OnlyFans. And then uh, after a few months, I received uh, the proposal on Instagram, like nothing special, you know, they are always searching for new girls mm -hmm. and new talents. So they just asked me, hey, would you like to be like in the more in the uh, adult entertainment, like do some boy girl scene? And and I didn't thought too much about it. I say yes. Like uh, I didn't thought it was like a big step because I was already doing like, OK, solo. And also before in Venezuela, I was doing um, my first videos for Pornhub with my ex-boyfriend. So, OK, yeah, I don't know. I was, okay. so you'd done boy girl before, but like on your own terms. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, really right. horrible videos, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did something. So uh, and then uh, people start to know me. I yeah, like, OK, this girl is doing things with guys also. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't feel like it was a big step. So I say, yeah, of course, let's do it. And but yeah, it's funny because uh, I always say like I had I've been so lucky because I didn't knew nothing. I didn't knew no one. I didn't ask like a hey, reference, nothing. But for good luck, uh, they were really professional people. Vixen, no, of course, uh, they were the first to come. So it me. was Vixen. Yeah, yeah. So oh yeah, I mean, that was really it's like, great. That's like experience. starting at the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. <laughs> so uh, they did the first production in Ibiza in Spain, mm -hmm. and. I say, yeah, I was just uh, scared about the test because mm -hmm. when they told me how it was everything with the test, I was like, I, I was so ignorant, you know, and I say like, can I not do like a test? <laughs> I was so scared because I never done before. Like I, I knew, I knew I will have something because never like in, in Venezuela, you go to, I mean, uh, gynecologists and stuff, but like they don't tell you, like, it's not so well known that, the, okay, you have to do like at least on my experience like you had to do this kind of test like i never done no one in my family told me like okay you should do once per year like nothing so i think it's like they <laughs> only suggest that you do std testing if you're you know having like sex like casual sex right and Which i have maybe, a lot <laughs> right but like did the gynecologist maybe there assume that like you weren't do you know what I mean? Like, do, mm. is it like more of a country where a lot of people like get married and they, and they have a family? Like, there's not like. Not really. I don't know. I think just people don't care in there, you know, like okay. people don't care that much. I don't I don't know. If, mm, I just never heard like someone around me ever done this kind of stuff. So, it yeah, was, like. So safe sex was not something that was like a big campaign. Mm. <laughs> of course, in the school, yeah, okay, we use condom and stuff, but yeah, like uh, not, 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 not too much. Yeah, more, okay. So that. you were nervous. Were you nervous <laughs> about the test because you were nervous about like the results or were you nervous about the blood work or? About everything because I don't like needles. So mm. I, uh, I'm so, yeah, like I, I was so traumatized now that I didn't like to take my blood. Like uh, that was a no. If uh, if it was not like I'm dying, I don't want to do. But yeah. <laughs> But if you got to work in the like, porn industry, you got to get very used to needles. That was so funny yeah. because I hate it. And then it's okay. Now, I, yeah, of course. And, and, and actually, I feel so also grateful for that because uh, now you feel, yeah, like safe. Like, yeah, okay, whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm good in my healthy. And that's the, the most important. So, yeah, but also I was scared about the results because I knew. Yeah, I, I knew something will come up. And it happened. Like I did the test, and I had a uh, chlamydia, mm -hmm. and I I cry. I was so like sad because I was there in Ibiza already, and uh, I felt like unprofessional, no. But mm -hmm. it was my first time, so mm -hmm. and they treat me so good. Like okay, no, it's okay. Just uh, take the treatment, and of course you have to be here more days than what they expect. And mm -hmm. you had, when you feel better, we had to do another test, and blah, blah, blah. and that's what happened. And I work. And it uh, was a great experience. I, I like it. Ibiza was beautiful. I, I have so many beautiful memories from Ibiza and this first production. And everybody I met was was really cool. The first experience in porn, I think, well, I mean, at least my experience, they treat you so good. So mm -hmm. just fun, bitch, uh, be nice people, sex, like beautiful. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. You know, like I've interviewed like over 300 <coughs> people for this podcast. Mm. And the range of ex 
first time experiences that people have is like all over the place, you know, like that experience that you had is is great. And I wish every girl could have that experience. I know. Yeah. Many but years. There's there, a lot of girls. Yeah, that yeah, that no, is not their first experience. With so really bad experience. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that really shapes how you view porn and the rest of your career. You know, I think a lot of people who speak out against the industry have unfortunately, you know, like had these terrible experiences that they shouldn't have. And then it colors their like view of the entire industry. And it's like mm. the industry is a wide berth of so many different things. There's bad apples like always. And then yeah. there's like really great professional companies like you worked for. I think it's better now than it used to be. I think like yeah, that's what a I lot of like the lower end companies and like kind of scumbags have been like filtered out. But, exactly, but exactly. by all means, not all of them. So it's still like you have to be careful. And you didn't have yeah, an agent. Yeah, definitely. So that's, yeah, that's why now I, when someone asks me I, I, uh, how she let start porn or whatever, I just say like, okay, just please ask and yeah, have some reference because I was lucky, but not, yeah, not everybody's that lucky to to find this kind of really professional people for your first works. So Did you look yeah. at their videos and their content before you said yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, okay. yeah. And I so say, you okay, like, this is so wow. Yeah, I mean, you can see, oh like, God, the yeah. high-end <laughs> quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's helpful. Yeah, for sure. That was nice. Because, yeah, I didn't have no one. Like, I didn't knew no one. I didn't have agent, exactly, nothing. So, yeah, I just went there. I, I was kind of scared anyway because, yeah, like, maybe they're going to kidnap me. And I'm not going to go back home. But didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. So do you remember who you did your first scene with, who the performer was? Yeah, of course. Uh, Al Alberto Blanco. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. I don't know any of the European people. Yeah. He's like, uh, because there's not that many options. Like, mm -hmm. they use uh, at least on Vixen. So he's the one. Uh, he's always there. Uh, mm -hmm. Alberto, I work with him many times. And yeah, he's so fun. He's mm -hmm. so fun. So it was a really good first scene. It was so was it very different than what you expected? Mm, I mean, I didn't have, again, like reference. So I uh, I, I was not expecting too much. Uh, but of course, I, I got surprised, for example, when there was too many people in set. Like, I think I asked, I remember I asked, like, OK, can can some people leave? Like, just stay the, the, mm -hmm. the main people that has to be. <laughs> because there, there was, like, the makeup artist, everyone there, you know, watching. And I was like. <laughs> can yeah. they go like <laughs> yeah it was funny but now i don't care of course like I yeah what i so. that is definitely something that i kind of watch for when i'm shooting especially when i'm shooting <laughs> a new girl because i don't like to have too many people on set mm. um and you know you want to yeah judge like how the ex performer feels because some don't huh. care right they've been in the exactly. industry for a while they're fine other people are like they don't want like a fucking audience yeah you know if you don't know how how it's from before like yes yeah, surprise like okay why okay i thought it would be like four people but it's like seven yeah <laughs> no it's too much yeah but yeah now I, I don't care and anyway you i guess you feel safer like because anyway when, sometimes you go with productions that is just like the camera guy and maybe you are like mm, yeah you feel where you want actually more people so it depends <laughs> yeah have you had experiences like that where you've done a scene and you felt like unsafe yeah like weird like this is weird but uh, because again you don't ask enough now i learn you have to ask many things before going uh, to any production but yeah when i start uh, maybe um, they got me some some jobs you know that i felt like mm, this is weird it's just like the the actor no i i think i never done like just pov no like mm -hmm. where is i think i remember no but just the camera and the actor and it feels also like mm, i don't know but nothing happened just yeah um, yeah, yeah but it's like being alone <laughs> with somebody that you don't know exactly yeah you, know? you don't know then so you don't know what can happen it always feels like for example good when there's a woman mm -hmm. on the set or whatever so when it's two guys it's like mm, i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah i hear you so you say that now you know to ask a lot of questions like what are the questions that you normally ask so like basically if a new girl is watching this episode uh. And she's thinking about getting into porn, and she's like, "What should be the questions that I should ask? Like, what should she ask?" Uh, well, uh, I think the most important, of course, like which kind of scene are you gonna do? Like details, uh, and and also, of course, the the performer. Like, mm -hmm. okay, who is the performer? So you can check 
from before who it is, uh, which of course the link of the production, like to see what, what is the kind of work they do. And I think that's the, the, the most important things, like the, the three things you have to ask always, performer and which kind of scene and the link to mm -hmm. the, where they're gonna post. Yeah. And yeah, and before I didn't do like, for example, to these kind of scenes. And then I, I realized it was like private, things you know like yeah. maybe some client pay for yeah. a scene and I don't do that anymore yeah like yeah I try to not do uh -huh. so do you think it was are you saying like it was a scenario like you show up and the guy who's filming it is shooting it for himself or the photographer or the videographer is shooting it for like somebody who ordered a custom that's not there can be both I was not sure yet can be uh, f uh yeah like for for him mm-hmm or for a client, like yeah. a private client. But that, yeah. that scenes never come up. Like, right, I was going to say, like, you've never seen them on the Yeah, no, there's some scenes I did, like, never gonna come up. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that person is enjoying it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because anyway, I didn't have, like, bad, bad experience. For Also, I'm lucky about that. But weird. Yeah, like, you feel weird. It felt weird. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you felt vulnerable. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I get that. I get that. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back. We're going to talk about the differences in shooting in Europe versus the U.S. So um, stick around. I'll see you in a sec. Picture this. So you're gearing up for a first date. The excitement and the nerves are kicking in. But what if there was a secret to boosting your confidence and performance in the bedroom? Introducing Blue Chew, the discreet and convenient solution that's revolutionizing the way that people approach these first dates. With Blue Chew, you can be your best self, no matter what the circumstances. It's time to take control of your sex life. Visit bluechew.com today and unlock your potential. Conquer those first date jitters. Be your best self every time. Discover your options at bluechew.com. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring this podcast. All right, guys, we are back. So you spent most of your career working for companies in Europe. So tell me a little bit about the difference between working in Europe versus working in the U.S. Uh, okay. I didn't get to work in here that much, so I feel like I, I don't – I cannot say big difference yet. I, I just see – there are many, I mean, of course, different things. Uh, for example, in Europe, what I see uh, with the agents, no? The, the, in Europe, I work uh, with all the agents, basically. <laughs> and here, you have to, like, choose one. But, of course, it's different because there you work also in different countries. Here it's just LA or a few other places. And But I like that, that I can get to work with different agencies in Europe because I feel they all find different kind of work like yeah sure that was one thing that i noticed too when i first uh -huh. went to prague to go shoot and i would like look at the different agency websites i'm like wait the same girl is on all uh -huh. of these websites like who <laughs> do i book her through you know and it was very confusing to me through 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 because here it's definitely like you are exclusive with one agent and exactly. even if like a pr uh, director tries to book you not with that agent like mm. that can be a problem too yeah, exactly. you know exactly the, and and also like in Europe and here, and there exists this kind of rivality of uh, with between agencies. But in Europe, it's more relaxed. Like okay, you can work with different agencies. They find you different works in different times. And so that's great. Something I appreciate. And uh, <laughs> and then I don't know what else. I think. Uh, what about the rates? Like the payment? Yeah, the rates. <laughs> <laughs> and so um. I'm trying to get like you know the B sign here, mm -hmm. and I've been contacting uh, agencies, and I let them know my rates in Europe, and they are like, no, <laughs> like no, no, we don't work this in here, and well, I feel kind of disappointed because I don't want to go low in my rates. I understand their point, like uh, here you get famous, here you it's it's very audience than in Europe. So that's no. interesting. So you're getting paid more in Europe than you're getting paid in the U.S. That is so weird because I had the complete opposite uh -huh. experience I heard, when I, I shot I've there. I've been watching, yeah, the experience of different girls and, and 
I heard a lot, huh? like for example, yeah, European girls get paid like nothing, yeah, yeah, in comparison with here, but yeah. that's not the case of all the girls, and and not all the girls charge what I charge, uh, not I, because I choose not to right. charge what I charge, and right. I, I choose to not work that much. Also, yeah. not some girls want to work a lot or. or I don't know, but yeah, I I charge different price <laughs> and and they don't like it in here. So I don't, I don't know. I'm going to try to do different way, but I, I know what you say, what you mean. I heard that many girls in, and it's true, like uh, not everybody can, can have this rate, but like I started with Vixen also, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they are really one of well. these productions that offer like more yeah more money yeah and yeah. i got like i say okay i'm gonna keep this price like i'm not gonna go down i i do different rates if they offer me uh, many scenes or stuff but I, i i never go down with my rates and and so here it seems um i cannot work for this price so <laughs> but i did you know so mm -hmm. i've been working in here with uh, but with few productions no i know uh, some productions never gonna hire me and that's okay because um, uh i i'm not like rush you know like yeah. i'm not gonna rush uh, it's okay and then uh, i work uh, that's why i work a lot for vr productions mm -hmm. because <laughs> they are so cool like they don't have a problem to pay the rates um but yes yeah, is that's something that surprised me like okay and some top girls don't charge and like I do in Europe. So uh, I don't know already if I want to like be here or I want to stay in Europe yeah. <laughs> because, okay. Uh, I don't also work. like the cost of living here is more. Ooh, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why also like I'm moving here and okay, my rate is higher than normal, but I even thought to, to charge more because it's like, okay, you have to pay agency, which yeah. doesn't happen also in Europe. But, I mean, Some agencies you have to pay, uh, one agency in Europe, you have to pay percentage, but the other ones don't. Like they already charge mm -hmm. the money for themselves. So also- To, to the to company. To, to the production. Yeah, the ones yeah. here do that too. So you just- They charge the money to the company and they take a percentage of your rate. They double dip. Exactly. I was like, what? <laughs> Which I'm not, uh, yeah. So you have to charge more. Like you living in a more expensive city, you have to pay tax, you have to pay agency. Like how are you gonna? I don't know. For me, it doesn't make sense. But it's true. And when I speak with the agencies, is they have different kind of view. Like uh, mm -hmm. it's like they told me, and it's true. Like some girls don't even care about getting paid. Like they just want to get famous. They want so to that be... their OnlyFans. Does exactly, that. exactly. So they yeah, they have money in other sources, but. I don't know if I if I want that for now. I understand their point, but well, I'm slowly building my my career. Yeah, like I don't, I'm not gonna rush and do and have to work with everyone because I, so yeah. I, I mean, listen, like I get it. I I have a higher rate too, for like for directing and photography, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of companies that like yeah. will never pay me like <laughs> what I want, and so like I just don't. Or, which is why I worked for like, you know, browsers and twisties mm. for like so long, like okay. just them, because like they would pay me what I wanted and everybody else was like, this is, and generally for us, it's like, we don't usually get like a directing rate. We mm. usually get a flat fee for a scene and then we have to make everything work for that fee, which is why it's sometimes harder to hire higher price performers because the company won't give us more money. Exactly. Like we have to put all put all those puzzle pieces together mm. but browsers and twisties didn't work like that which is why i really liked working for them they were like this is your rate and then you know if they wanted a performance she was more like they would pay that you know what i mean like i'd send them a a breakdown of what all the costs were and that obviously they mm. determined like what they were willing to pay and what they weren't but it wasn't like a you know here's thirty five hundred dollars like shoot a scene for that like you know what i mean yeah. flat and you have to just make it like work which is A, which can be a real struggle exactly. especially if they want like a girl who's more money and they're just like and i'm like well she's five hundred dollars more they're like we don't care and I'm like, well, <laughs> well you're I gonna mean, have like, her <laughs> yeah so Easy. so i get you i'm i'm definitely there uh, yeah. um 
So <coughs> when you show up to set and do you ever show up to set and you're not attracted to your scene partner and like, how do you handle that situation? I mean, um, I always, uh, I feel like uh, I'm not, I mean, of course we all have the, that type, not like, okay, we like uh, more this guy or that guy, but actually uh, me personally, like uh, I know how to enjoy people like different mm -hmm. type of people like so i never struggle with that that much like uh, maybe you arrive on set and the the thing i of course uh, i care more is like if you smell good or bad like the smell is really important but the looking i don't i don't really care because uh, I, it happened before i start porn uh, I just go to date with people that maybe it's not really attractive for other people, but <laughs> I just like different things about them, like, and things. Uh, so you find something that yeah, you like. Yeah, I find about things. Them. I always find things that I like. So it, I, I never felt like, okay, this guy is so ugly. Like, I, no, no, no. I just, uh, he has something attractive on here and there, and or just the, the way they are, not like a maybe i work with some guys that yeah maybe they are not um, handsome but <laughs> they are they get really excited not to work like uh, they are good vibes they are really smiley they make you smile so that's great like uh, i enjoy it so i don't really care if the the my partner in the scene is handsome or not i just care about more basic stuff like the chemistry and like yeah, whether or not chemistry, you yeah yeah, just, yeah. Um, do you prefer men or women? Um, no, I prefer men, honestly. I mean, I need the, yeah, I need the dick. But I, for shooting, I always say I prefer girls. Mm -hmm. I like um, to experiment with girls because I don't do it in my private life. So and I love to enjoy when I got to work with girls. It's, it's where I enjoy more. Like I, I come more for real and... It's always nice, not always, of course, maybe e even easier because you don't have to have something inside you. So <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's nice to take a break from that. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. No, I think I love them both. I just never got the opportunity to be with women in my private life. I don't know why, but. <laughs> well, you can like, I think you can enjoy both sexually and then like actually when it comes to a relationship, because that's so much more than sex, Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Like I, if I you're into like, if men are your vibe for that, then exactly, exactly. that totally makes sense. So yeah, both more or less. <laughs> um, what has been your worst day on a porn set? Um, I think the worst, uh, I would say um, my first anal probably. Oh, your I first was, anal. It happened really fast. Yeah, when I started Boy Girl, they, they already like a few months after offered me to do anal. And I was like, well, okay, why not? Of course. It was a good offer, so I was mm -hmm. like, okay, let's do it. Had but, you done anal in your personal life? I No, uh, by, for that time, no. Uh, I tried to do, my boyfriend was, uh, my ex-boyfriend was obsessed to fuck my ass, but he tried many times and I don't know why. We never done, so no, for that time was like my first. Like uh, ever. Yeah, I mean, I always go just the tip. <laughs> so now <laughs> it was the, the whole thing. So yeah, it was the first. Uh, the panel like for say that and I was I was really nervous like uh, they um, and some people from production told me how to clean but I didn't have experience I didn't have like really friends in the industry to ask like hey how can I do this and make it easier I I didn't investigate too much so that day I was really stressed and I of course I, I shit a bit on the performer <laughs> and we were stopping a lot I was, ah, I was crying i was in panic Aww. but then everything was good like anyway it, it was with tushi the same people so they were really nice uh, every every time we had to stop we just stop um i was just stressed by mm -hmm. myself like i don't feel i don't remember they were treating me like oh you have to do this uh not i was just pushing myself like oh okay yeah i did the shit Donald. and and when i see that scene again yeah i say like oh so shit but <laughs> <laughs> literally, <laughs> oh, literally yeah, but, uh, I, I think it's also cool to see how you how you progress i'm better yeah, yeah. And progress yeah so now i i my last scene's anal uh -huh. beautiful but the first one 
<laughs> so what did you learn from that experience? Like, how do you like clean out now? Like now mm. that you know. I know. I just know like for, for example, I have to push the water, which I didn't do in my first scenes. Mm-hmm. I just put the water and, and I, and I, you push what you, what you feel now. And then you are like, okay, it's enough. But then you go to the set and you still have water <laughs> inside you. Oh, no. So, so you didn't get like all of it out. Exactly. Like, so that, that happened to me too once when I was shooting a scene. She just didn't get it all out. Exactly. So yeah. that's, I think, what I learned from Anna, like you just have to clean, but also make sure everything goes out. So like this, you feel really calm. So how <laughs> do you make sure everything goes out? Do you like go walk around a little bit and then like try to go to the bathroom again? Or do you use a toy? Yeah, you have to use a toy. Use a toy. Okay. okay. And then you try to like make mm. sure that there's. And of course, yeah, like what people say, no, don't, don't eat too, too much. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, girls don't eat before anal scenes. But uh, I, I also uh realize uh, from my experience my body that uh, i can eat not mm-hmm. like uh, you don't have to be starving before an anal scene you just uh, have to be careful what you eat like choose well so mm-hmm. you don't have a yeah stomach issues before going on set but then do you use like a modium or anything like that sometimes i use sometimes just to make sure like yeah just to feel more sure that everything's out yeah. but when you have like before the those days on um, for shoot that scene if you if you feel like you're going to the bathroom okay like uh, you don't have to stress that much but if you get nervous no you get the stomach pain and you're and this kind of thing so <laughs> yeah you just yeah you have to listen to your body like just to see what is best for you yeah and working in the adult industry is like a really great way to get to know your body I yeah, mean, the yeah way definitely. that like you understand your body and how to treat it at Girls have a lot of body awareness, exactly. like sex workers do. It's really amazing. Mm. Um, what was your best? <coughs> what What was your best day on a porn set? Um, oh, I had many best days. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I think also. I guess when I was starting, everything was so beautiful. Like then it became more like oh well, more job now. Before it was like the first years was like wow, everything was such a cute nice new experience mm-hmm. and so i remember i guess like uh, when i start to shoot i start like for example my first boy girl scene in september and then it was my birthday in october so we had a great scene and i was shooting i was in ibiza and then they celebrate my birthday and i don't know like uh more than the, on the set i i don't know i have many good days on set like we just finish uh, one night scene and we all celebrate. Then we go drink, we go eat. Uh, um, and, and when you are in Europe, you are in these beautiful places normally, no? like uh, islands and beautiful mm-hmm. locations. So I don't know, I, I, I have many. Yeah, nice days on set. <laughs> it's not Beautiful like when you're here in LA and you're shooting in like a warehouse in Chatsworth. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, no it's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the summer comes. It's like unbearable. Uh, um, what is the best thing about your job? Um, the best thing. Uh, well, uh, I say before, like for example, I get to have so many sexual new experience, which. People think, oh, it's not like, yeah, porn star, yeah, you, you do all this on private. I don't do nothing what I do on scenes on private. Like, mm-hmm. I just have normal vaginal or anal sex. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I get to have so many good experience. And of course, to meet so, so many cool people, to travel so many beautiful places I never thought I would be. And to have the independ- independence, like to be free and... and just to yeah like uh be free and uh, i don't have this work uh, yeah you like don't have like a nine to office five office work yeah. yeah so i appreciate that so much because uh i never had like since in venezuela i i, I think i tried once to have this kind of job and like i don't know how people do like really. <laughs> people yeah. do but i don't know how uh so i appreciate so much uh, that i born in this years where you get to have this work and you are so free you are so like you, you can choose to do whatever you want to chase your dreams is is really nice yeah what's your least favorite thing about your job 
uh, well, I guess that the you I don't know how to say like um, when you get into porn, uh, like people think you you can just do porn, no? Like uh, so, it's hard to do to try other. So like the stigma. And the stigma, exactly. Yeah. I, I forgot the word. I think the stigma, yeah, mostly. And then to have relationships is harder. And like, I feel people don't take you seriously. Many people judge you. The same people that pays you judge you and, and can treat you really bad. And it's, um, it's really hard, yeah, like to share something that is not porn when you are a porn star. Like I, I feel girls that do that are really brave, but because I, I, I still like, okay, I have to do what my fans want because then when I, I see with other girls when you share other stuff that is not porn they get so judgy like oh, no nah, you just do porn you don't work for any other things like people get it's really rude with the porn stars I yeah. think they're still really rude and judgy so I think that's the worst when you become in porn like uh, you kind of like have to be in porn or people like yeah you're pigeonholed yes yeah for sure crazy. for sure um, if you weren't working in porn, what do you think you'd be doing? Like if you had never gotten in the porn industry? <laughs> uh, I think I'd be doing something similar. I mean, probably like, or, or photography. I mean, I always like photography, but I don't know because I always liked also more to be the model. So mm -hmm. I guess I'd be the model. Uh, I, I wanted to have this job also, but well, uh, you have to choose a few things you're gonna do everything so uh, like be boudoir model erotic mm -hmm. or uh, i would like to be just normal model I, I i had these thoughts when i was younger like just fashion model now mm -hmm. I, I had some lessons and stuff but and i think for sure porn was the best because i'm such a sexual girl so that was great or i will be doing Scored something like that, mm -hmm. <laughs> something in modeling stuff. Something like, in like that modeling, yeah, exactly. like erotic realm. <laughs> gotcha. Um, where do you see yourself in ten years? Um, I don't know. I guess in Tenerife. I hope, <laughs> and uh, just uh, I I hope that I'm not sure. I can just uh be off socials in 10 years like uh, or less like i want to do the career and everything and enjoy it the most i can when i still this young and stuff but then i i i just want to have a different life dedicate to different things i'm not sure yet what i'm gonna be doing of course and i have some ideas but i just want to have a calm life like mm, i think it's so uh we are so deep in in this addiction many people know in the phone and socials yeah. and can be really stressful and someday i just want to drop my phone on the window on the trash and just yeah like, i don't want to be more in socials i want to be totally something different just a big house i hope with many animals <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, chilly life chill life beautiful like yeah simple so. it's hard when you're i mean especially as an independent you know, entrepreneur, which is basically what sex workers are, you yeah, know, exactly. like, especially, you know, working as independently as you have over the years, like, and having your personal content platforms, like OnlyFans and stuff like you have to be on social media, because that's your promotional tool. Yeah. Right. So and like, I know I am kind of and many people like I'm kind of addicted to the phone, like I have and I would like to someday don't be like, I know anywhere on the phone. I think it's a socials. problem that we all have. Yeah you, yeah, you compare yourself, you you are stressed, there's so much competition, so many people coming out, like you have to be there every day on socials and yeah, yeah. someday I just, soon, I hope, <laughs> yeah. like in five, six years, I can just say like, okay, yeah, it's enough, I have enough money, I can do another business and that's it. You just have like a simple chill life and you're beautiful. Yeah. Farm beautiful life. on the island <laughs> farm island life yeah <laughs> i hope <laughs> um where's the craziest place you've ever had sex um i think uh okay i think in the car i mean but not like in the car like we just stop and, and have sex but did this guy crazy like he was driving and he told me to jump on him like and he keep driving I, I think that always I remember like the craziest like he was just driving and fucking me at the same time 
How did that work? <laughs> that guy's crazy. <laughs> he has a nice big cock, so I don't know. I just sit on like the side, like. <laughs> And he's just like and driving. driving yeah. I really hope. Were you guys like in traffic, or was there like nobody around? No, I think there was no one, nobody around. We did a few times, and yeah, I always remember that. Like, hey, this guy is so crazy. Wow. <laughs> I mean, did he? He didn't like come, did he? He he come, yeah, he come. Really? <laughs> While he's <Yeah>. driving? <laughs> Damn. Such a multi. Yeah. Talk about distracted <laughs> driving. Shit. Can you imagine getting pulled over like that? I'll be like, excuse me, sir, you were swerving all over the road. Yeah, this girl was just, just bouncing on my cock and I couldn't drive in a straight line. But it was nice, so sexy, so hot. <laughs> don't try it at home, kids. No, don't try, actually. That's so dangerous. <laughs> um, what's the one thing that really gets you turned on when you're hooking up with somebody new? Um... I don't know. I just like the. I I like just I I really love the just the feeling like you want to fuck me so much. You know, I I date with handsome guys, and the, are or maybe some kind of famous people, and they don't make me feel the same. Like when I go just with another guy that maybe is not that handsome or whatever, it's just I feel that energy that he wants to, like. How you say? Uh, you want to feel desired. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, of course, desire. But when someone tries to do everything to make you feel, yeah, like desire. I don't know this word, but whatever. Um, I just like to be treated like a princess, <laughs> and and to feel the desire. That's that's everything. Like the most important. So the most important thing is to treat you well, and make you feel special, and that's yeah. that will get you started. Like the specials, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Who has been the most influential person in your like personal journey? Like, is there any one person that's really influenced you? They can be someone from like your family or like. A, no, in- I think it's um, and the first production I met uh, uh, someone I'm not gonna mention the name, mm-hmm. but <laughs> someone that's still been on um, with me by my side, and since I met him. He's a performer also, mm-hmm. and uh, he been so good. Like I'm so lucky I got to meet him. I meet him because and uh, he gave me so many good advices, and he he just uh, keep me in a good uh, in a good way. You know, I didn't have no one. I didn't have friends in the industry. My family, I mean, they were always supportive, but they never like helped me in these kind of things. I yeah. I did everything by myself. So I, uh, I'm so lucky to have him. Like uh, he, uh, he made me understand everything. He had some. He has so much experience in the industry already. So he gave me so many good advices. Like really, for him, I, I, I am who I am now. Like Agatha Vega, and anyway, I, I still made so many stupid decisions. I have, <laughs> but he kept me away from many other like stupid decisions. So I'm so glad. I met him like since the beginning because yeah. I met him in the first production and uh, I'm so lucky like uh, and, and he's still like giving me advices and everything. He's like my best friend. So yeah. <laughs> that's so important. So it's much. really great to have somebody like that. Exactly. Um, what is a valuable life lesson that you've learned from like a challenging experience? Uh, f- just I think. Uh, the biggest lesson uh, now that I think like uh, be patient, like be patient. <laughs> Just uh, things cannot be that bad always. Like when you feel bad, it's not gonna be always like this. Just be patient, breathe. Um, when someone treats you bad, just go away and and just. I don't know. Yeah, I think just be patient. That's the most important. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, like uh, I, I was not a patient girl, so I, I wanted to rush. But again, like I had this person who told me, like, okay, be patient, just wait. Things are gonna come, and that's the best. Like uh, for that, uh, I didn't took so many bad decisions. So and I still want to. I, I still need to be more patient. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, I know. I can relate to that for sure. <laughs> I definitely have jumped the gun many a time. Um, how do you define success? And success. I 
think uh, to um, depends. Uh, for me, it's like to feel free to mm -hmm. do whatever I want. And success is to feel good with myself, with the decisions I took, more of them. And yeah, to be free to, to make my, uh, my dreams come true. Like, uh, that's great. Uh, it's not easy to be a porn star, but uh, when you really like what you do, and um, I don't know, everything just come really great. And you can be success, like just feel good with yourself, what you've been doing and that you can be free, make your plans. That feels wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, the power to make your own hours and be your own boss is, is pretty great. A lot of people don't have that. Mm, exactly. I think. Yeah, for sure. Great. Okay, so to wrap it up, I have a couple of Patreon questions for you. I normally do a different segment for this, but we're going to we're going to add these in as a little bonus to this main interview. Um, a couple of these have been kind of answered, but um, I will kind of ask them again. Um, Michael Lee first says, uh, Hi, Agatha. I've been a fan of you since you shot for Vixen Media. How was it working with Julia Grandi, who is a part of Vixen Media? Uh, working with Julia is always nice. Uh, I've been knowing her for many years and... I mean, I like, I, I consider them like a family. And of course, with the family, sometimes you don't have good moments and then you have wonderful moments. So, and I, I'm so grateful for her because she trusts me and um, I think she knew somehow. Yeah, like I, I could be this big um, name, at least on Europe uh, for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, and I have so many good experience with her and some others that maybe are not that good, but it's like, again, like family, like uh, we have good moments, bad moments. And I understand her uh, when we had also bad moments. It's like, I understand because it's not easy to have her work. Like it's not easy to have all this pressure. And I know I can, uh, models and especially me, like we can be pain in the ass, so. <laughs> no, never, no. what are you talking about? <laughs> I know I can be a horrible pain in the ass, so it's okay. They have to be really patient, so I appreciate that. And I have more, way more good moments than some bad. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I mean, I will say, like, as a director, like, yes, models can be a pain in the ass, but also, like, directors need to understand where they're coming from, too, because, like, being talent is also. not easy. And there's a lot of, like, situations that are, are really hard to get through because it's, like, one of the things that I really – learned i used to host a show for playboy tv and i'd never really been on that on camera that extensively before that and one thing that i learned was like how hard it is to emotionally be on camera when you're not in that mood mm -hmm. like when you're not in that place in your head and you're not like feeling great that day yeah and you have to like be happy for the camera and like deliver these lines in a certain way and like that was really emotionally and like mentally exhausting and i yeah. never realized how hard that was until I did that show and that really like helped me understand like how difficult it can be to be on your side of the camera. It's difficult, yeah, both both words. So that's why um, I try to yeah, like understand we all have just bad days and yeah. uh, we don't know what it's happening in our personal life mm -hmm. each one. So yeah. It's hard to judge like we just have bad days. <laughs> yeah, totally. oh. um, and then Michael's next question, we kind of already answered it in the main interview. What is the difference between European and American porn? Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. No, I know. guess these things I mentioned, yeah, like uh, for some girls, the rates, the agencies, the um, the the places you get i mean i i also like that about you know like really you go to beautiful places yeah. <laughs> like yeah i i mean it's more easy like okay you have to keep it in the same area no 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 but i i appreciate that in europe like you really get to go beautiful places you never imagined before and it's just a great experience in your life yeah i, I think it's it. like because europe is this like conglomeration of all of these different countries and stuff like that and there's not like you know you can get 
you can be go from England to France in an hour, right? Exactly. Like completely different culture and everything. Nice. Like here, you can get to Vegas in an hour, which is like <laughs> not really that really different. So you know what I mean? And it's like, it's um, and even though we have a lot of beautiful places in America, you can't like go shoot porn in like a national park. Uh, exactly. You know? Exactly. I like, see that. Unfortunately. Uh, exactly. So I guess some productions do that in here sometimes. Like they go different areas, locations, but. In Europe, it's more common. Yeah, like Prague is so beautiful. Budapest, you get mm -hmm. to go many islands to shoot. Um, so that's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, my next set of questions is from Hugo. Uh, he wants to know how you chose your stage name. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I like uh, uh, Precious Stones, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah. Esmeralda, Safiro, Ruby. I, was, I always wanted to have these names for my private like so I I always want to to change my name so I thought okay this is a great opportunity to choose the name I always dream <laughs> and I like all these uh, bullshit names but then I I heard like uh, they are like uh, names that many scores and this kind of girls in the world use mm -hmm. so I don't know I never heard uh, Agatha you know I was thinking all of this Agatha Esmeralda Ruby Safiro the Diamante and then I don't know where to choose Agatha. And Vega is similar to my last name. <laughs> so gotcha. Agatha Vega. And it was easy. And I, I'm, I'm glad I chose that name because uh, choose a name that start with A makes... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I'm always on the top, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so true. You know, when someone search me, it's always like, okay, Abigail, and I got that. Yeah, you know what's so <laughs> funny is, um, I don't know if you know the performer Aaliyah Love, but she literally specifically picked that name because it's A A. A A, exactly. L. That's something yeah. smart. And she's like, she picked that name because it would put her at the beginning, which I was yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's really, really smart. <laughs> uh, and then you kind of already answered this already. Um, do you prefer to live in Venezuela or Spain, and why? I think think mm. i mean you probably miss venezuela a little bit i miss yeah i wish we could live in our country like and anyway it's too far now from where mm -hmm. i will have to work so spain is way more comfy but yeah i miss i miss too many things from venezuela and i wish it wouldn't be that hard to live in there just uh, normal life but mm -hmm. it's not possible so spain is great it's beautiful also i love it yeah. <laughs> and then his last question is what got you into tattoos and do you have any advice for finding a good tattoo place a good tattoo place no i mean there's so many artists of tattoos so just uh depends what you want no like uh people is so different and there are so many different artists and um, but I, I always choose to do colorful tattoos so i go of course with people that is really good on colorful and I don't know. I always uh, like to get a, like my first uh, tattoo is really ugly. I'm going to get right, rid of it. But <laughs> then I I try to do nice tattoos. And so I have the two I have mm -hmm. and I'm not planning to do more like um, I think uh, for my perspective also can be distracting not to have many tattoos. So I like the ones I have. Probably I'm going to make them more colorful, more nicer. But really depends on what you want. Like there's so many good tattoo mm -hmm. artists. Like just choose who you think is gonna be the best one. Where are your tattoos? Because we can't tell with what you're wearing. Yeah, uh, this ah, one. Ah, ah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and many people still think this is a new tattoo. Some people like follow me from years, and then they come up like. So oh, what? It, can you tell us a little bit about the significance of that tattoo? Yeah. Is that a? That's a rabbit, right? <laughs> yeah, I love. I love rabbits. I love. I just. I mean, I love all animals, but I had a pet, a rabbit, and best experience. Like they are so funny, so so cute. I was all the time like, wow, he's so cute. Like everything he do is so cute. <laughs> but then I didn't have the the experience to have bunny, so he died pretty quick. <laughs> oh and no! And I did a tattoo, yeah, like to remind him. But I hope I can get the, another bunnies, but with more experience because they are delicate. You know, like I feed him with too many things, so I think that's why he died oh. so soon. <laughs> and the other one is the the solar system in the back, but I don't think you can see with this dress. But yeah, people know if okay. you see my movies. yeah yeah yeah. I can see it. I can see it. So, um, uh, I love the universe. Like, uh, I think. When we, when we all think uh, why we're here and everything, like it's such a complicated things to talk. 
but I feel so small and I feel like the universe is so crazy, unbelievable, beautiful. So I, I wanted to get this tattoo and I'm, I pl I'm planning, but probably when I get that out from Poland, like to do bigger and colorful and mm -hmm. many stars, many things. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, I love that. Well, Agatha, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Um, can you let everybody know where they can find you online? Yeah, and so Instagram, Agatha Vega, uh, official <laughs> with the C at the end. Uh, I have a purple pick and I, I don't think I'm ever going to change. So search for that profile with the purple pick. And then Twitter is similar. I don't know why I had different names on everything. It will be easier to have the same. But Agatha Vega, official too, with just one C at the end. <laughs> and I don't use the talk. Uh, at the moment, I don't have YouTube. Probably I'm going to open a YouTube channel. So basically, Twitter and Instagram and Pornhub. <laughs> Agatha Vega. <laughs> you can find me in all the tubes. And then do you have an OnlyFans page? Oh, of course, uh, Agatha Vega with 3A at the end. Wow. <laughs> lots of lots of extra letters. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I choose these names on my <laughs> socials. Yeah, like different. So complicated. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. Go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered to watch these interviews live and get access to special bonus content. Go to hollylinks.com to access all of my social media profiles. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you on the next one.